world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Way back when I was in formation for the diaconate, the Old Testament instructor had very creative ways to make sure that we did our reading assignments. From outlining entire books of the Old Testament, uh, and that was before I had a computer and a sophisticated Bible program that could do it for me. But one of the challenges that he gave to us was to write about who the greatest king in the eyes of God was in the, in the Old Testament. And of course, we immediately thought David, and I took a pull around the office and other places I was this past week and asked people who they thought the Bible said was the greatest king in the history of Israel and Judah. And most people said David, some said Solomon, uh, and actually two people got it right. And if you're interested, you can read 2 Kings 2325 to give you the answer to that. Um, you might want to re read about King Josiah beginning in 2 Kings chapter 22 to get the whole picture. But he was, is stated as being the greatest king in the eyes of God because of the religious reforms that he did in bringing the people back to the law of Moses. You know, the chosen people pleaded for a king. Some of the kings that came into Israel's history were great, but most of them, of course, were sinful human beings, broken individuals. And Israel continually prayed for and longed for the ideal king the king that would lead by example, the king that would serve the people. And their prayer was answered, but not in the time or in the way that they expected. As we celebrate this solemnity, solemnity today, Jesus Christ, our Lord, King of the universe, we recognize that we have an ideal king and we have an ideal king and much more. And there's no comparison to any earthly king. We can't get a sense of what Jesus' kingship means by any past or present earthly king. And you, Jesus used kingdom and reign almost interchangeably. All the earthly kings had a reign had a kingdom that had geographical boundaries. And Jesus, as we celebrate today, his reign is over the entire universe. But at the same time, it is over the human heart. It is as small as the human heart. Jesus wishes to reign over our hearts. And just as I cautioned about trying to use an earthly king as um, to get an idea of what it means for Jesus to be king of the universe, I cautioned too in those, the first reading from Daniel and the reading from Revelation. They talk about Jesus, the, the king, coming on a cloud. And I offer a caution because it might give us a sense that Jesus came and did what he wanted to do and left to, to reign from afar. But that's the furthest thing from the truth. He promised his Holy Spirit to continue to teach and remind us. And as I said, he wants to reign over each and every one of our hearts. Last week, 
Father Dan talked about the priesthood of us believers as baptized Roman Catholic Christians. And the same is true of our kingship. When anointed with the chrism of salvation at baptism, we were all anointed as priest, as prophet, and as king. In other words, in our baptism, we too are called to be kings like Jesus. We are called to be servant leaders. We are called to die to self for others. We are called to share and pro proclaim the kingdom of God in our midst. In the gospel today, we hear a familiar exchange before Jesus before Pilate. Jesus talks about his kingdom not belonging to this world. And this is something that Pilate does not understand at all. Jesus also tells him, for this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. This also is something that Pilate does not understand, even though the author of all truth is standing before him. There are all forms of supposed truth in our society today, but we should know in our hearts there is really only one truth. Pilate washed his hands of the truth, and Jesus was led from there and established his reign as king of the universe from the cross. As Daniel puts it, his dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. Jesus established his reign by the ultimate act of self-giving love. We are called to live in the same way. There is no such thing as cheap grace. And if we are to do our part in spreading the reign of God, it must be the same self-giving love that Jesus shared. I doubt that any of us will ever be asked to give up our life for our faith, but we are called to die to self in order that others might have life. The people that know me know that most times when I'm preaching, I'm preaching to myself. The Lord presented a few questions to me during my time of prayer and preparation for preaching today. And then I thought, well, maybe the Lord wants me to share those questions with you as well. And so I offer these questions for you to ponder as we celebrate our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the universe, as we ponder his reign. What currently reigns over my life, over my heart? Am I willing to allow Jesus to reign over all aspects of my life? Am I willing to trust that he has it all covered? Am I willing to trust that no matter what I'm dealing with, no matter what happens in my life, in the end, Jesus has it within his power, within his reign. My brothers and sisters were asked to decide today. The fact is, is that our Lord Jesus Christ is king of the universe. There may be those out there that wish to argue about this point, but it's undeniable as attested by the lives of the saints and the martyrs 
and those people that exhibit extraordinary love in their lives. The evidence is overwhelming. The questions I just asked need to be answered in order to gauge where we are and maybe compare where, where, where our desires are. They're not intended to create shame, but rather encouragement. If you are human, you might, might find, feel to be powerless in living the life that you're called to. In, in acknowledging fully with your heart the reign of God in your life and to satisfy that deep desire that you have that has been placed there from God. I'd like to conclude by leading us in a brief exercise. And before doing so, I'd like to suggest that you use this every morning when you first wake up, when you sit on the edge of the bed or when you put your feet on the floor, and that you take the time to pause as long as necessary and invite Jesus into your day in the following way. So if you're comfortable, I invite you to close your eyes. Make sure that you're comfortable in your seat and rest your hands where they're comfortable. And I invite you to repeat after me. Jesus, come reign over my heart. Jesus, come reign over my heart. Jesus, come reign over my heart. Jesus,